Welcome, everybody. My name is Todd Kierset, and you are watching TK Talks, stories of inspiration both on and off the golf course. I have with me quite an extraordinary young lady, Tanel Bolt. Tanel, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks, Todd. Good. Now, you got involved with golf at a very, very young age. How did that all start? My dad was the superintendent at the local country club, golf club. It was a very small town. So, yeah, one golf course town. And then you started playing at an early age with him, or was that part of your life growing up? We always recreated on the golf course. It wasn't anything that, you know, I didn't call to book a tee time, but when he went to fertilize the greens at night, we'd go as kids and take a handful of golf clubs and the dog and go and pitch and putt around where he was working and, you know, goof off in the river and the ponds and just always a, you know, 18 holes of golf course is a really good place for three kids and a dog. <laughs> Not a bad family time, that's for sure. That's yeah. awesome. Now at 16, you got a job on the golf course. I did. My summer job was at Lethbridge Country Club at 16 years old as one of three females on staff and the youngest female on staff, the youngest individual on staff. Uh, it was great. The hot summer sun of Lethbridge is awesome to work in and 4.30 mornings with the river bottom and it was an Audubon nature reserve so we had yeah it was a little piece of paradise in the prairies for sure <laughs> and then you got into doing a little in high school you got into fitness um through a little bit of a roundabout way through a football team uh fitness happened it started with scoliosis okay. curvature of the spine so i had a really gnarly curve and i ended up in a back brace my senior year of high school and I was the statistician for the high school football team. So we had a beautiful new gym that the school had just built and opened in a new wing, our high school. And the football guys were in there anyways. And any chance that I could take to get the back brace off, which was snowboarding and going to the gym and <laughs> showering was basically it. So uh, my dad told me if I didn't get in to do any sort of core and trunk exercises that after years of wearing a back brace, I would come out in more pain with less muscle than I started with. So got into the gym and started training just, yeah, I fell in love with it. It was a great tool for health and wellness and body function as well as mental health. Uh, always a little bit anxious in school and the stressors of that. So it worked as anxiety control and I just held on to it as I grew. Then you took that passion and turned it into a little bit competitiveness. I plateaued, felt as though I had plateaued when I was 26 at, if I was to go any further, I'd have to go and get education as a personal trainer or I just, was working a lot and had a little bit of an expendable income. So I went and hired a personal trainer and our first conversation Darcy and I had was why not spend this goal or spend this money to reach a goal? So what's your goal? I didn't have a goal. I just wanted to be more physically fit in a different manner with a different physique. And so we aimed at a fitness competition. And so that was, that was me launching into the world of competitive fitness was just why not reach the top level if you're going to go and pay for it. It's setting goals for yourself. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's fast forward to, to August 2014. What ended up happening then? August 2014, I booked a weekend off and went camping. Uh, so it was Sunday after a weekend of camping, just before heading back home. We were in Port Renfrew and I was with two friends. We stopped by the bridge over the river to cool off before driving back into the city just to, you know, chill from the 
rat race of downtown life and went to Port Renfrew and in the bush and I jumped off of a 60 foot bridge into a river that was flowing below and must have landed on some type of debris possibly underneath of me. Uh, it was definitely very deep. There was, you know, or possibly potentially human error, right? I don't know if I hit flat footed or if I was off camber or if I hit a piece of driftwood or a stick. Um, who knows? But yeah, I sustained a spinal cord injury that day. T6, complete spinal cord injury. I broke my T5, T6, sternum, two ribs, 14 spinous processes, catastrophic injury. And yeah, stayed conscious through the whole thing and had an amazing crew of rescue individuals on top of my group of friends that, you know, the whole community comes into play at that point when you're in the bush and far away from any hospital or means of you know real care like that so now you first were responders and, and yeah i was airlifted heli back so the air ambulance bc air ambulance came and picked me out of the woods and topped gun me back to vancouver where i went under surgery right away and I'm fused, was fused from T3 to T9, now fused from T4 to T9. I just had a brand new uh, bone graft and spine fusion replacing broken rods, what, seven weeks ago, six weeks ago? Your, your past physical prowess, let's say, uh, really helped you out in your rehabilitation. I definitely believe that my history in fitness before injury has played in my ability to persevere with injury. Um, yeah, it, the way the body heals when you are trained to break your muscles down and break your body down and have it recover at a more rapid rate with diet and training and lifestyle and whatever, um, plays into when you're healing from anything like if you get sick or you break a leg or you break I just broke a really big bone but you know like friends of mine healing from femur and tibia fibia breaks and it's all when you're an athlete you heal at a much greater rate you know you're trained a certain way to get through it um you usually have a group of people who are familiar with your body like physio and chiropractic work and stuff like that because it's not usually the first time you've done it um, yeah training more training so how did you then get back into the game of golf i i don't know if i ever was into it or if i ever fell out of it it's always been there because dad's always there um, and it's a great place to go and you know, it, again, in the evenings as an adult, before my injury happened, I'd go and jump on the golf cart and cruise around the course and you know, golf one hole in my flip flops with dad at 7.30 in the evening when nobody else is out on the course. Um, but I started Rad Recreation Adapted Society after my spinal cord injury because there's a large gap in the Canadian system where there's assistance for independent living adults that have kids that need help that just don't make a bunch of money because adaptive equipment is heck it's hella expensive. Um, so I started this charity and I just started reaching out to anybody and any manufacturer and person and athlete that did things um, it started with skiing and then it went into paddling and then I found the paragolfer which was engineered by a gentleman who lives in the U.S. and is originally from South Africa and it just looked like like <laughs> I have some mechanical inclination behind me 
And I know how the body works because of all of my fitness and personal training. So this piece of equipment, just like I was geared to, to it, everything about it was attractive. I'm like, all right, I have to go. I have to find this. I have to try it out. Um, I know that golf is an aging sport. So I see all of this like vast other opportunities with it that not, I don't know, people see me in a wheelchair, paraplegic specific, you know, now I have to overcome the stereotype of being in a wheelchair in order to help people with mobility challenges, be it aging or genetics or something that's happened. But Paragolfer really just hooked me. And so first call was to dad hey, is this piece of equipment going to damage the greens? I got told no, got the green light, spent 13 months trying to get the dang thing to come to any of the seven golf tournaments that I was going to in that summer. Uh, that didn't happen, so I drove to California and got myself a pair of golfer. <laughs> on 50% on down and goodwill and the signature that I was going to do great things with rad and golf and promote the whole game and sport and health and wellness and activity and longevity of recreation and independence. And, and you've done that by leaps and bounds. What you're doing with rad is absolutely incredible. You know, you've, you've gone out and fundraised to get some incredible equipment out there that people really can't afford on their own. Um, and they're able to rent that off you and, and able to utilize it, try it out before they make the purchase themselves. So that's, that's great on what you're doing. <laughs> I do my best as one individual to facilitate as much of British Columbia as I possibly can with a very limited inventory. Now let's talk about Mallorca. What, ha what happened over, over across the way? <laughs> I went to Mallorca for the first annual uh, International Wheelchair Golf Open Championship. 42 para golfers on a course in Mallorca was insane. They gave us caddies. It was the coolest thing. I think I was the only one that asked for one and <laughs> everybody wanted one afterwards. But I don't know the course. I definitely didn't know the para golfer that I was using at the time, but it was a very, very, uh, it was a, if it was broadcast appropriately, it could have started to change the world view of golf. Uh, there is another one that I'm attending in April of 2021. I don't know what the involvement of um, the US partner is going to be this time around. Uh, but I would like to see it better broadcast because it was a very, very well curated and organized. There was people that would say otherwise, but 42 wheelchair users in a foreign country and the travel back and forth and the shuttling and the organizing and the hotels. And like, I was blown away by how well this event went off. Like, I don't require a bunch of um, extra necessities to get around, and many of the people that attended this also don't. Um, wow, it, it was really cool. There was only four women, so anybody, any other girls that want to come and para golf and get out there, and the it's beautiful on the course, and all it does is heal your head, heart, and soul if you don't get any crotchety guys in your way, but <laughs> they're usually pretty forgiving. Now let's talk about what, what was the first tee shot like? You know, you're at this Mallorca Open and, and you probably have a bunch of people around you on the first tee. What was the first shot like? Epic. It's like what you see on TV. <laughs> Didn't go very far because I'm the fitness buff, right? I want to crush it as far as I can. And golf isn't always about that, especially pair golf in the beginning. It takes a little more finesse. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it was perfect I hit the ball off the center of the face of the club and it made the sound that you want it to make and everybody did the clapping thing like they just hit the button on the computer to make it auto generate and it sounded just like tv uh, yeah it was and like in Spain with if I wasn't paragolfing there'd be no no dream of me doing 
that and having that experience. It wasn't something that was on my bucket list to go golf in a beautiful course in Majorca. I'm not retired yet. <laughs> now, what's in store for you for the future? What's going on in your world? Holy moly. Well, COVID-19 has us all flipped upside down uh, ish because I've been healing with an acute injury and having all of this hardware replaced in me and a bone graft. My life had to slow down regardless. So I'm, it's tough to, in these times to say I'm grateful for it, but I am grateful because it's, my mental health would have been in a much worse state had the rest of the world been moving at the pace that I thought I needed to be moving at and my entire summer would have imploded by my definition of it. Um, so I'm relaxing and healing and doing normal people activity for the first three to four months, I've told by my doctor. This is what TK Talks is all about, sharing stories of inspiration both on and off the golf course. Danelle, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you, and I do look forward to watching your journey online and meeting you in person and doing some great things together. Oh man, I am so stoked for the launching of Adaptive Golf on Vancouver Island. That'll be a spring 2021 thing as well, you know, postponed with the rest of the rad, <laughs> the rad things going on in adaptive recreation. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited, Todd, to be working with you and pushing all of this as a team in the future and building the program so that nobody ages out of it. That's right. Now, it's a pleasure. Listen, you be safe and we'll talk to you soon. You too. Ciao.